Today on The Hangout, can the Raptors rebound when they return home? More Lance is what the people want. More Lance is what they get. And it's now best of three as the Bucks bounce back. This is Hangout. Basketball fans, this is Canada's home for talking hoops, coming to you from the greatest city on the planet Earth. Can't nothing or nobody stop us. Toronto is home. I'm Akil Augustine, and I've got a star-studded panel to talk basketball. But before we get to the stars, we get to the stud. Dan Gladman, producer of the Toronto Raptors broadcast, looking very rock and roll inspired. You going on tour after this or what? Well, hopefully it won't be for a long time coming. I'm <laughs> planning on being with the Raptors for several weeks here. Okay, well. But it's you, getting close, isn't it? it we're, we're, <laughs> we're well tuned in to what happens yeah. with our summer plans as these Raptors try to finish out the first round series. One of my favorite people, of course, the Memphis Grizzly Bear. Dylan, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. All right, getting your, getting your reps in for TV for your post-basketball career, I see. Yeah, yeah, you know, I love Long being time. on TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's like 20 or 30 years away, I feel like. Yeah. And of course, the big boss hailing from the NBA TV offices in Atlanta, Georgia, by way of Massachusetts, I imagine, believe? No. No, I thought you were like a Boston guy originally. Uh, New York, New Jersey, Northeast. New York, New Jersey. All right, but North you don't want to confuse Boston and New York. No, it's true. That's like the Yankees, Red Sox thing. Jared Greenberg. Jared, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Pleasure for having all you guys. But let's start with you, Jared, because um, we want to pick the brain of someone who resides and is a member of the American media. There's this perception in Canada, especially in Toronto, that uh, the Toronto Raptors, both historically and specifically with this pretty talented group that they have right now, don't get respect from the American media. Now, we know it's true, but does, like, the Raptors losing... You know it's true. We, we feel that way. That's a right. chip on our shoulder, right? Right, Dylan? It is. He knows. Very true, very he knows. true. He knows. <laughs> but, like, especially after going up to then giving back two games, is this the issue? Is this why people don't believe in this Raptors game, their kind of reputation throughout the last little bit? I don't know. You know, I, I, I think the thing is, you know, one, what we lose track of is, like, LeBron James has been... The reason the last two years why the Raptors him. haven't advanced, right? Yes. And I, I think we have to kind of appreciate that we're talking about, in my mind, one of the top three greatest players of all time already, and, and that's been the reason. But the great thing about sports and the great thing about pro sports is that it doesn't matter about what your perception is, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what your ranking is, mm -hmm. you go and you win and you earn the respect. And, you know, I, I, I think like Raptor fans, from what I hear, is like they want the respect before. Yep before earning it. Oh. And, 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 but, but that's not to say we're taking away the American media, and I'm not speaking for everybody here, but like, it's not to say we're taking away from the 59 wins this year, yeah. or being the one seed. It's that once you become the one seed, now your expectations change. Absolutely. Right? When you do something and you win a conference in the regular season, as Wayne Casey said, you know, our 82 game schedule should be a pretty good sample size of what we did. Yes. Now you've got to go in the playoffs and go prove what you were able to do in the regular season, you can do it in the postseason. And, and that's, I would say, you know, for this team, you got to get to at least the Eastern Conference Finals. And if, and if LeBron, if LeBron isn't the one standing in your way, you probably have to get to the NBA Finals. I, I, I completely agree with the second half of your sentiment. I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Dylan, you agree this Toronto Raptors team, as good as they were regular season-wise, it's a failure, and, and they haven't proven anything if they don't get to at least the conference final. Oh, for sure. Uh, and that's including a matchup in the second round mm -hmm, with LeBron? Mm -hmm. LeBron's no longer an excuse? No, LeBron's no longer an excuse. You gotta find a way to, you know, get past LeBron, and now LeBron's team is a lot weaker this year yep. with a lot of young guys, new faces. So, you know, you gotta find a way to beat LeBron, and, you know, Indiana's doing a great job right now and you know, contain LeBron. And They've bloodied him. Wins. He looks yes. human. Yes, yes. Right. No, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, now, Dan, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how badly do the Toronto Raptors miss the presence of their backup point guard, Fred Van Vliet? Vliet, people, Vliet. They're, they're missing him a lot, especially in the fourth quarters, which is when you're used to handing over the ball to him and they're turning over the ball, which they usually don't do, and you never see that with Fred in the lineup. Um, I think he just, his presence during the year stabilized them, especially in late-game in late game scenarios, and I, you know, I think that's really lacking right now. I mean, look at, look at the Detroit game in March. He hit the winning shot. They have as much faith in him, really, as they do in Kyle and DeMar, which shows you how, how important he became to the team, and him not being there through these first four games, I think, has really hurt the squad. All right, Jared, let me throw this at you. Um, I'm, a, I'm not a basketball expert. I'm a, I'm a big fan. 
But I do notice some things. Uh, I noticed that the Raptors miss Fred Van Vliet, mm -hmm. but I noticed Kyle Lowry's body language in the post-game press conferences in this series. And I've always kind of had an issue sometimes, but what do you make of some of his antics on the podium when being the questions are being directed? I, I think it's Kyle trying to show us that he's not panicking mm -hmm. like maybe some of the fans are, or he's trying to show us that this is not like every other year. You know, and I think it's important to realize that how they've lost these two games, while you can't justify them and say that, you know, it was cool that they lost, but how they lost was different than how they've lost in prior years when you really had to scratch your head. I think that the, their, their losses in Washington were kind of correctable, right? And the fact that you have a best of three series with two games on your home court to win, that I think Kyle's saying, all right, listen, I know a loss is bad, and I know we're up two games to none, but we know what we have to fix, and we're coming home to play two games at home, you know, game five and game seven, we're going to be fine. I think that's what he's trying to say. Okay, Dylan, are, are, are you in agreement? Because for me, I'm looking at it like, okay, I feel like it's a bit of, it's a bit extra to me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a bit concerned when I see that. I don't know why, but for some reason, I can't put my finger on it. It kind of irks me. Your thoughts? Well, you know, I just feel like the same way. I agree. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's nonchalant. Uh, just saying, you know what, you know, a loss, a loss, you know, we got to move on from it and, you know, get this next win at home. You know, the aura in the Air Canada Center is crazy. So, you know, he's not worried about anything. You know, he's got his fans behind him and everyone pulling for them. So, so you got the Raptors rebounding and taking this thing home? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, best of three Raptors well, take to, two. To, to go along with, with what you're saying, Dylan, the, the ACC crowd is going to be intense mm -hmm. for game five. But there is that little bit of fear, that anxiety that comes along with these playoff rounds. And, you know, really, you, you, you touched on it, Jared. They're the number one seed. They are expected to win the first round series. It happens all the time. So, really, there is an amount of pressure on them. And, and I have to agree with you. In those press conferences, he has to be that brave face and show how calm they are in this scenario. All right, we're going to go to break quickly. I want to put you on the spot, Jared. Raptors take this? Yes. Okay, good man. I like nice. it. <laughs> yeah, good good answer, good answer. Still more to go here at Canada's Open. Can I to validate my parking? No, we're not going to. <laughs> Guess who's validating himself? More Lance for the people. Lance for president. Lance for prime minister. Lance for Lance. Hang out.